Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We have a special guest in the building. His album comes out this Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Offset. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back, brother. How you feeling, man? How's everything? I feel good, man. Blessed, man. I'm, I'm in a good spirit. In a good spirit? Yes, sir. Album what that comes merch out? you been wearing? What is that? Denim Tears and me collab. Okay, okay. So what's the, what's the orange? Is it it's like, it's like It's like a cotton reef. That's okay. like his signature, so I put the flames on it because I'm setting it off. You did. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So now, uh, second album. This is the sophomore album. Set it off. Why did Why did it take so long? The first thing people would say it's been a It's been a while. Why it took so long? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things, you know. Um, lost my brother is 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 the main reason. I was gonna drop last year, I think, around March, but um, I had got out of a creative space. Like after that, for a minute, I had to sit down for a minute and like. Get with my mama and pray and get 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 myself together. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I just wanted to perfect the craft. I ain't want to. I wanted to make sure that I that I that I dropped and it and it, and it counted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't want to, uh, especially like coming out of the group and stuff like that. I I wanted to make sure um, everything was aligned. I ain't want no record sounding the same. Mm -hmm. I didn't want me sounding the same. And uh, just being hard on myself, critiquing myself on the music. Your household is very perfectionist. Yeah, you 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 and Cardi, y'all want to be perfection when y'all when y'all both come out with with your projects. What got you to the space where you say, okay, well, I'm ready to to record again, and I'm back in a space where I can rap or I can get in the studio where or I can focus. It was the thing missing. It was like me getting away from it. it was like taking the happiness with, like my happiness is when I work and record in the studio, nonstop. Even if I know if I'm not putting it out or not, it's just a my it's like my mental cycle, and um, uh, I just felt myself like going into this little black little hole. And um, my mama was just like, just do what you love, go to make some music. He would want that you to push forward and win, though, when you push forward, win. So that's what got me back in there. Mm -hmm. Was there a different level of urgency with this album because you know there's like truly no group to go back to? No, nah, there ain't really no urgency. It's just like, not for that reason. It's for like, for my identity, I mean, for my career and like, mm -hmm. For me to push forward, that's why I took so long on it too, like, cause I just want to make sure I'm coming full circle and it's and it's a little different than before. Now with with, with your brother Quavo and we seen you guys perform at the award show, right? And it meant a lot to the world, right? Cause it, it was a surprise, nobody seen it coming, but it, it just showed the beautiness of this game and how brothers can be. Yeah. What was that initial call like when when they called you guys and asked you guys to do it? Um, I was in Paris doing Fashion Week and uh. They called and I wasn't like, I was like, I wasn't sure at the time because it was like, you know, it's I'm running away from the reality, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I had talked to Pharrell. We were sitting at a show and I was telling him like, man, I don't know if I should do it because um, it just ain't gonna be right. And it's, I feel like I'm scared it's gonna put me back in that moment. And he was like, nah, you gotta do that for the world and for him. Like in y'all legacy, man, y'all one of the biggest group ever in hip hop, and also like he would want that, bro. He was like, you need, to, you need, you need that energy. You and your brother rocking that stage again, even if it's for the last time or whatever. Like, and this is that where he's like, even if it's for the last time, or whatever. He don't really know what was going on. He like, but it's gonna be a cleanser to, for both of y'all. Was it? Was. Yeah, it, it was. was. I swear it was. It was. It was. It was. It felt like at first before I did it, I was still like. Cause it reminds you, you know, it's a reminder. Mm -hmm. And um, but after we did it, I just felt I, I did feel good about it. Like, close the chapter on the right way, like on a big way, unity, love, and like giving to the people. Also, what was it like before that? Cause I know that everybody talks about. I guess y'all got into something backstage somewhere. It was a video where everybody heard Cardi yelling, like y'all both wrong. Mm -hmm. So what was what was it like before that moment? Oh, uh, before what? Before before, before y'all got on stage, like oh no, nah, we, we 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 were together, man. Like that shit a swallow hard pill to swallow. Like your bro missing, all that other shit go out the window. You know what I'm saying? It's like family of everything. Let's do this shit right mm -hmm. more than anything. Because when you go into something with the wrong energy, you ain't gonna do it right. You know what I'm saying? Went into it with the right energy, and that's my brother. So they said you had to when y'all got back. It wasn't like it wasn't scheduled, so y'all had to practice like for 24 hours before the awards yeah, to get it right. We had to practice the night before. Like one one practice though it didn't it wasn't, but like we was in a we was locked in and like wanted to make sure the creative made sense like when you seen the rocket and all that go man we re actually did that last minute, and then it was like 
feel like the old time because we was always late anyways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but we made it work out, and I feel like it was I I kind of performance, and we did our thing. It was good. What's your relationship now with, with Quavo? That's my brother at the end of the day. But we good though, bro. We just That's with good. each other in Paris. We be talking because we be going through little emotions and shit like with this shit. So, I think, and it don't be for the public. That's the thing, like. When it's like this, it don't be everything ain't for the public to be kiki and everybody want us to be, but we still gotta move in our own worlds. But it's like it's all love at the end of the day. We lost a brother, we can't you rock they, out. You know they want to see y'all cry on Instagram. Yeah, that's what they want. You know, not gonna get it from me. Mm -hmm. You think y'all ever make music together? Not even just as Migos, but just as Set and Quavo. I think so. Mm -hmm. It's more about like right now for me. It's more about me like create my foot in the game because this is the situation. Also business wise, like I'm, I'm, I'm on my own business wise too. So it's like I'm a grown man, I got five kids too. Mm -hmm. So I gotta make sure I'm putting that food on the table. I think a lot of fans was were hoping that there was maybe lost takeoff versus or lost Migos records and that they would get that one more Migos album. But that doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. Nah, that's ain't, that, that ain't fair to put that pressure on us either. After losing brother, man. Like, Maybe, you know what I'm saying, the future. Mm -hmm. but right now, I just don't see it. It's like hard me hearing our songs sometimes in the club, bro. And people, I might like got a smile on my face, but that shit like take verse, come on, that shit like touch me every single time. So it's like, I don't see us doing that shit. Now I can imagine, cause yeah. to us it's just a verse, but to you, it's like you probably think about the moment y'all recorded we made it, song, day. Yeah. yeah. It put me in that bag every time. I was just in Starless the other night. Mm -hmm. And they playing um, Freak No More. Mm -hmm. His verse come on. I'm like throwing money. His verse come on. It just like slowed yeah. me up real quick. So what was, uh, the, what was the story behind that song? You remember when y'all recorded it? Yeah, I had just got out of jail the first time wow. when I first got out. Wow. And we was at the uh, studio, and it was like my first time working in a big studio because I ain't never really working in a big studio. We always worked at home before we took off, and um, I hated my verse. I felt like cause you know I felt like I'm rushed. I'm coming home. I'm like damn, I'm rusty as hell. I'm thinking they so good. They've been they've been doing this shit. I ain't been, I had not been doing it. I probably was out for like two weeks. And we did that. Damn. And look, it's still playing in the script club today. Yep. Now, now, what's the difference between this album, Set It Off, and Father of Four? Okay, Father of Four was like, I felt like I was getting more, more personal mm -hmm. about who I was, uh, my story of going to jail, having kids young, uh, the story of my wife, my letter to my wife. I'm just in a, but this album is more like, the music wise, it's like more fun. I'm I, I didn't I did all the new producers, so I didn't really except for Metro and Southside. I ain't really work with all the producers I work with on this is like new producers I never worked with because I didn't want to create the same sound because I feel like artists now like as an artist, sometimes like you just get stuck in your ways. And I let a lot of I worked with an A R this time. Like I know a lot of people shit on the A R game, but shout out to G, my A R was fire. So she was able to bring me different producers that I never heard of and mm -hmm different sounds and giving me, critiquing me on the music. Like, nah, this shit, sound, number, this number one sound like number eight. Number eight sound like number 10. And for me, I, I was happy because like, usually I ain't going for that shit. You know, I ain't letting nobody tell me mm -hmm. nothing. But I understand like change, the game change, the sound be changing, and you just gotta change with it or you gonna get left. Is it difficult with, with you doing music, right? Because you are a, a father of, a husband, your father of five, but yet you're still in the club, so you know what people want to hear. You know people in the club ain't married. You know the people in the right. club might not have some kids. So when you do your music, do you say, well, I got to put myself in their situation yes. and take myself out from the husband and take myself out being the father of five? Because you didn't, on this, on this album, you done knocked off a lot of, a lot of chicks on this album. That's what I'm he's like, going to ask you. How you do you continue a lot of to rap about fucking all these women all set <laughs> and you're a married man? That's what he's uh, going Because I got a real wife like that she understands like we in, this, this is like, I got to be relatable. Mm -hmm. And especially like our age, like the, the average person ain't married and like, like we don't tell each, like people, sometimes people, I, I can see it like, you let your wife dress like this and you let her, we don't like, I'm very secure by mine, you know what I'm saying? So we don't, we ain't in no controlling shit like don't do this or I'm not telling her don't do a feature with that da 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 da, mm -hmm. like, because it's just like, this, 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 that'll interrupt the love I feel like when you go to doing that because then it's like, damn, I want to be this person. I got to talk to all these people, all these fans, and they got to relate to me, but they can't relate to me if I'm standing in one lane. So I'm just blessed to have a, a good wife. But is that guy. real, though? 
Cause you like you know you are a married man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So is it, is it, is it, is it real? But that's how. But niggas ain't married. Fuck them. <laughs> okay, so you say that, but like, that ain't who I'm trying to like. Like, marriage in this time, I feel like somebody be married probably older, cause they've been married for a long time. Like mm-hmm. now, niggas ain't getting married. Girls ain't getting married. Like, I still gotta be relatable. I can't turn into like, like box myself into one lane. Mm-hmm. And it's like, especially the type of music you make some lit music, some fun music. You still got kids and youngest that's in high school and college still listening to it. Like, if I look, look at my analytics, my shit is big from 13 to 18 still, like long, like big still. So I'm still influencing that, that generation. It's not relatable, so I'm gonna be out of touch. What about the people who, those same kids that love your personal life, they love you and Cardi together as a couple and they follow y'all on social media and see all of that and they like, damn, they might want to hear that reflected in the music. Cause I know people got really excited when they heard y'all doing an album together. Yeah. Um, or EP or whatever it was. They, don't, they, don't, they can't get mad at me cause I'm not going to tell her like, you can't say shaking your ass or like you having a good time. Girls want to feel that shit, them bars she be saying. But I guess you know too, when Cardi talks about that, I guess we all automatically assume when she says she's shaking ass, it's shaking ass for her husband. You know what I mean? When, yeah, when she's for doing sure. it, it's like she's doing it for set. But you know what I mean? For you, when I heard I'm knocking off this bitch, I'm like, oh, he's putting his mind frame on somebody that's in the club, not himself. Yeah, I got to, bro, because mm-hmm. it's like, it's more of bros doing that than there's people that's married. Mm-hmm. Facts. These are facts. Mm-hmm. These are facts. So I just still gotta be relatable to them. They gotta still feel like, Ah, oh, shit ain't on no old nigga shit all like shit and got mad and da 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 that nigga. We don't even understand him no more. And then it's the worst. Then there's no coming back from that. Mm-hmm. So it's entertaining. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? We it's entertaining. entertaining. Ain't nothing but some entertainment. For first song on the album, you say you knew you was the one since you left the group. I think that was that was the line. Mm-hmm. What what did that line mean to you? Um, um you caught me right there. It's, it's fast on the How you know about that? We heard the album. album. <laughs> oh, y'all niggas ain't even tell me what the album hitting for first. <laughs> <laughs> like, heard the album, the album, say what the album hitting for. <laughs> I fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely fuck with it. Um, so that's just like a confidence bar. Like you know, I went through some things I can't really speak on. Like I stepped out of the box and like had to get my shit together mm-hmm. on the business side of things. And like I was, I was like after that, the freedom and the being able to be in control of my creative and being able to do that was like. Now I can show you who I am. If you notice, like now people kind of see like I got a personality. Mm-hmm. They fuck with me. Like I felt like that shit was kind of like bottled in, and, and when 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 everything was all as one, because mm-hmm. it wasn't really about me. It was about mm-hmm. us. This album is about me. I could also tell of the album that well I, I knew it beforehand, but it shows more that you're a real hip hop lover, right? Yeah. Like like your roots are, are, are very long for, for hip hop. And, and you know, even with the Don, I think it's the Don Tolliver one where they kind of sample a Busta Rhymes and you kind of yeah. doing Busta Rhymes flow. That you actually, so how important was hip hop growing up to you? Cause I know you got roots in New York. I know you got roots in the land. I know you got roots a little bit of everywhere. I'd, I'd be seeing set with people. I'd be like, how the fuck do you know him? Man? Like, <laughs> so, you know, talk about your roots and, and what hip hop means to you because you sample a lot of that on this album. Uh, hip hop, man, mean to me like, man, Growing up is like the superheroes, you know what I'm saying, to me because I felt like it was so out of reach. And also I felt like they was like saving the world with the music and like, and 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 you know, seeing like Cash Money, Master P, cause I'm from the South, Andre through that, like, like Outkast. It was like, I never thought the game would be how it is now. Like, cause you know, y'all had, y'all was, y'all was ball hogging. But you New got York family in New York, York too, Carolina. I got family. I'm from South Carolina. Okay, okay. I'm from Queens, but you got family out here, though. I got family out here, but y'all had the game in the Toko, and like growing up, you know, we from Atlanta, so we might not ain't listen to it. I might ain't get on Jay Z Towers in high school. You feel what I'm saying? I might ain't know him through middle school. I knew Guap, I knew Gucci, and I knew Jeezy, I knew Andre 2000, I knew Future. It's like it's like our neighborhood heroes, and like me, I feel like in general with music, you gotta know your roots to be able to and pay respect to it too. Like, I watch the James Browns. I be watching like how they would dress or how they stay set would be. Or sometimes I go watch a rock and roll, like Motley Crue or something. I go watch them stay, stay set to get a, like a like a, like a idea, of, even on stage and like, cause I feel like you it always rotate, but you could just do it better in a better way. Well, one of the things you say throughout the album is uh, you, you, you keep referencing Blame It On Set. And that's a dope record too, by the way, the Blame mm-hmm. It On Set record. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things you think folks blamed you for? 
No, it's not like the people blame me for it. It's like it's like a it's like me talking to myself almost like everything you went through is cuz of you. Okay. Got it's you. like taking responsibility. Got everything you. you went through was cuz of you like anytime anything happens it's, it's it's on you. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. It wasn't like a specific like y'all blaming me. No, it's it was just like taking time being a man, jail, being a man, yeah, yeah accountability, yeah, yeah. like accountability for all actions. Got Pe you. People were mad at you a couple of weeks ago because you did that interview uh, with what, what's the name, Bobby? They weren't Austin. mad at me. I no. felt like they was they, oh, that smoke that in. I felt like they was fucking with me. I'm like, <laughs> when I say they, mad, they, they were mad at you that, that you even gave her an opportunity to interview you, you know what I mean? But when you look at the interview, I mean, I'm looking at one time. I think it was like it was over three million views already. So you know, people were, were saying, well, why would you give that girl an opportunity and not somebody from the culture? Uh, reached out. I did my research, and I was like, I'm open to do it because you know I don't like doing interviews at all. I was like, I'm open to doing an album on the way, shit like that. Um, and I feel like it was kind of comical, like it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny to me. It wasn't like I wasn't taking that shit like offensive and shit like that. You just gotta be on your toes when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, no, she needed to be on she, her toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she needed it. <laughs> she needed it. You know what I'm saying? And, and also like. I'm doing this for the brothers. You ain't finna catch me slipping on this show and be down talking me, and you like, you just coming up off TikTok. It's all love though, but she 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 cool, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I, I feel like um, a lot of people did take a lot of comedy out of it. It was it was supposed to be funny, man. Mm -hmm. You told her she needed some seasoning. Yeah, she do. She did oh, need absolutely. a little bit of seasoning. Hundred percent season. I feel like to cook I, out. I, I like I like what she do, but I feel like you still gotta know. You gotta know something about the artist. That whole playing dumb, like you don't know who you talking to. That Guarantee shit ain't you know happen. something. You got you mm -hmm. know. I think just getting caught up in your character kind of like, it could get on you. Mm -hmm. You should especially dealing with these brothers. Black folks, you say I'm a black person and you doing that, it's kind of like, what the fuck? Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, but it's cool though, man. It ain't no issues or nothing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of people's mad at her like, but that's how she do the interviews. I think I brought it to our world more. It's like a lot of people like, who the fuck? And why does she? It was kind of taking it as like yeah. she was being disrespectful, but she wasn't. She just, just I think that's the way she got on. Mm -hmm. Now you know I hear I hear you channel a lot in this album. I hear a lot of Project Pat. Yeah. Were you were you listening to a lot of Pat? Free Six and Project Pat. Yeah, man. Yeah. They they that's what I'm saying. It's like the underground music and to come to and then they went underground and went big. Shout out to Juicy J, man. He a player. He a real nigga. Good producer. Um, he ain't taxed me on the records. <laughs> he taxed you. He oh, 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 so, oh, he, oh, he did production on it. Nah, you get certain shit you gotta talk to Juicy J about. He ain't do production, but certain shit you gotta holler at you. Oh, so when you just using that But you gotta flow? think the sample on Jealousy is Juicy J. Yes, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then it's the South music, man. It's just always something about the South music to me, even growing up. Just always felt like we was a shit because it was relatable to my, our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You from you from down there, man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now we had we had Cardi up here and we were talking about uh, your marriage and everything, and she was like, sometimes it's difficult not to keep things off social, right? Like the one time y'all always argue on social media. Y'all never just say, you know what? Let's I'm gonna put the phone down and call her. She's crazy, man. You crazy too. You know you married a woman from the Bronx. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Said you got to know that. Yeah, I've learned it. <laughs> 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 I learned it so. Uh, it's just like, man, the hate fan base, man, sometimes be like trying to like kill niggas. So then sometimes you gotta like, I feel like I gotta protect her. You know what I'm saying? I've made mistakes. You dig what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. those mistakes make me continue to have to protect her as a man. That shit don't just go away. So like, I just hate that shit because it's like, we be good, bro. Living a life like it's golden. We got beautiful kids. We don't bother nobody. But you know how I be. Shit whack though. Mm -hmm. but, but what about when you when you posted that uh, your wife cheated? Like that's causing turmoil in the house. No, I was calming her ass down. Don't play with me. Same way she. <laughs> but then the next day they hold their hands together. Because it was count. It was count. Everybody know it was count. She was like, man. She was like that. She was like he, he was playing. He was lying. Sometimes better go in too much on me, man. Like oh. and it make sometimes. So I didn't want people to think like people thinking this shit's real. So it was just a little uno, reverse Uno car. That was she said. She <laughs> said you threatened uno. her. You said if you don't stop, I'm gonna get online and say you cheated. Yeah, cause that's the thing. She gotta make. Her, she got like she still somebody too. So like when they be doing that, like it be like making her seem like she a sucker or some shit. So mm -hmm. then she gotta. But then this time when she did, it, she kind of like. And I'm like, oh, 
Slow that shit down. Tone that shit down, baby. <laughs> Tone that shit down. Don't, 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 don't do me like, hey. Set willing to blow up the whole house. <laughs> we'll blow up the whole car. Blow up the whole house. We all going down. We all going down. This is my <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. It's over. Oh. For real. But we turn that into fun, though. Mm-hmm. We turn that into fun, man. Fuck y'all, man. Haters, man. Now, six why? years strong, man. Yeah, six years congrats, strong. Congratulations. congratulations. Why, why didn't Playboy Cardi clear the song for the album? That's a rumor online. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Shout out to my boy, man. See, because I don't get into it with niggas by music. And sometimes people be going through their own. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shout out to bro, though, man. He should have cleared that motherfucker. Smash, though. I ain't gonna cap. But we like that. I don't get mad at folks for like that because sometimes people be going through their own little shit. Mm-hmm. Or they might not. Won't, I don't know. It's all love, though. It's my little bro. No do you make what. a call when the label says, hey, Cardi won't clear it? Do you try to use your personal relationship? Hit him up like, bro, what's up? You gotta know your your boys. Yeah. You, know I mean? you gotta know your homie. That's why I don't get into it with my homies, cause I always I know how my homies is and shit like that. So I ain't even really hit them on that, hit them on that like that. It's just like I'm like trying to move forward. It's cool. Like mm-hmm. I got some shit at the end of the day. So that's how it's eat it dog, eat the bro. So love to him, man. I ain't no no little loss. He be going through shit too though. Absolutely. He my little brother. I talk to him on some other shit. So sometimes he go through shit. So it ain't not no little loss. Maybe on the next one. We saw this summer too. You dropped uh, you dropped your lawsuit against QC. Can't talk about that. Oh, you can't talk about it. What's the relationship like now though? Is it shit? I can't talk about it. Got you. Mm-hmm. Got you. Got you. Okay. Now, did authorities contact you after Nicki Minaj's husband made those threats against you? That was another rumor. Man, hell no. Okay. Always ain't never calling me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no number for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they were saying they reached out to see if you wanted the press charge. Man, please. Mm-hmm. I'll never do no lame ass shit like that. Mm-hmm. I'd rather keep it in the street. Like, do some shit like that. That's, but that shit, all that shit a joke. Grown ass man and doing shit like that. I don't even want to bring it up because I don't want people to like. But I just laugh at shit like that. Yeah. I got real money. I'm handling real business. I'm on the way to the Coach Prime, man. On, on, on the jet. Like, Word. I'm 30 years old, bro. Like, I'm grown as hell. I got, and, and I'm trying to like, you know how long it took me to get away from that? Mm-hmm. Like, that bullshit on, online, like, so that's why if anything online like that, in that manner, I just blow it off, cause like, I done been in meetings where they like, oh, you the bad guy. Like, I'm the one who got out of jail. We can't do this, j-. like, I done missed out on money for that shit. So sometimes like, and you just too, I'm just too old to participate in shit like that. Like, I think sometimes niggas want you to be, uh. Tough, and then when you crash out, they call you stupid. That's right, absolutely. That's the right. crazy shit about the shit. Right. Nigga want to be tough when you crash out, call you stupid, and then like I'm not going online with that mm-hmm. for what? For like, what? Mm-hmm. Don't y'all? You know, I, it's, it's just odd because y'all will cross each other paths all the time, right? Because y'all both are at award shows, so it's just weird that it went that far and just just why online? I just just never never understood. I just I just feel like I, I always say this like. I don't ever get in that, cause I'm a man. Mm-hmm. So the man should stay the fuck away. Like, it's, like whatever's going on, whatever is going on, I don't, I don't get in that. Like I don't, I'm not like doing no song. I'm not doing no type of to to that direct to none to that direction at all. Cause it's like I'm a man. Like mm-hmm. I'm not getting in that business. Uh, the little DM shit you had seen was cause I'm a grown man. Also, like I'm saying. Men, it, not even shouted, but men is like going up, like they trying to do something. I'm calling my wife, our bitches and shit. Like it's a respect thing, brother. At the end of the day, like don't speak on my wife, and then I'ma DM you because I don't know you. You see what I'm saying? I'ma DM you to see what what are you doing, like what you got going on, because it's not for the public. And then you go up with the shit. It's like goofy shit. That's why I don't be. I try to stay away. I shouldn't have never even said nothing to a nigga at, at all, because I'm never gonna see you. We ain't gonna see each other, bro. Mm-hmm. It is you like a street punk out here in New York? So whoever the nigga was, like a street punk or something. It was like a random nigga that wasn't even in our business, not even in our world. But you threatening my wife, bro? I'm not playing those games. Mm-hmm. I hate when men say anything about my wife, cause it's like you're a man. Let me get this phone in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you a man? Mm-hmm. Don't speak on my wife, bro. I don't care how people think. Like, oh, why you? Why you? Why you? Man, this is my wife. Mother my kids, man. Like, men disrespecting the wife. I see you ain't playing by choice either. 
Knew it. <laughs> yeah. You want you want you want to box niggas in their mouth? I'm gonna get on your mouth. Yeah. We gonna make yeah. Box your mouth. All that plan to tweak. All the trying to twinkle your toes and kick your feet. Un- all that. Don't 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 speak on my wife, man. Just be. Cause I'm not gonna speak on you. I never speak on a woman business at all. It's just right. not gonna happen. Even mine. I I did it one time. That one time. Yeah. What you just talking about? Mm-hmm. But I usually I'm not speaking on no woman business. You're gonna lose as a man mm-hmm. every time. But that wasn't real though when you posted it. Yeah, that wasn't real. Yeah. That was some caption. Mm-hmm. Now, um, he got, yeah, well, he got the crazy questions. Come on, come on. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna talk about the song "Healthy" on the album. Mm-hmm. What does being healthy look like? The offset nowadays. Um, keep a God first. Mm-hmm. Uh, stand focused on the creativity and the pitch I'm trying to paint for the fans, and like stand away from negativity. Mm-hmm. Doing it on my own. All right. That's why I said keeping all this to myself or no, because it's like, I got too many people to, basically what I'm saying, like I got too many people I gotta help and bless to be thinking on my own. Mm-hmm. Like me moving, making decisions and moving and doing shit on my own. It's an effect, it's a domino effect to my family. And, and yeah, man, I'm just, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad God was able to take me in a, in a, in a, in a cool space. I go through things behind so, closed doors sometimes still though, for sure, but for the most part, I'm kind of focusing. Mm-hmm. I think me being able to create and do shoot my videos, how I've been doing them and doing my own, I got my own production company. I've been directing my own videos. Being in control of my shit brings me happiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm a grown man. It's not like before when I was young and just running around getting the money and like not paying attention to details and shit. So I have to now, so that brings me my happiness. Now, even even being young, you thirty one now. Y'all been married six years. How did you know at twenty five, just the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? Um, cause it wasn't about nothing. You dig what I'm saying? Like it wasn't about. It was a no motive. It was just vibes and feelings and like growing into each other, depend starting to depend on each other and like when I'm this shit ain't easy to go through. Mm-hmm. No matter young or whatever, like the industry and the game, the ups and lows. That you know, it's just like this with this shit. Mm-hmm. And to have somebody right there that's like, that's gonna push you and not just be there. She pushed me, she prayed with me, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I had never had no girl praying with, pray, praying with me, praying with me, like you pray with me. You, you are a family woman too. Like when I go see your roots and when I first was going home, like how rooted you were to your family. Mm-hmm. Me coming from the South, you know, that shit mean everything. Absolutely. Like in this age, day and age, a lot of the like, the women ain't, Nowhere near their mamas and aunties and mm-hmm. grandmas and like don't talk to them because maybe they're ashamed or whatever, whatever they got going on. She's a family person first. Mm-hmm. So when I felt like I, I got to keep her, like support me, push me, let me know shit. Like you could do this better, you could do this better. Mm-hmm. I'm letting her, I, I lead, but also she like, she right there for me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, m- niggas don't get it. Like that's what gets you, when you get you a good woman, that's what get your focus like. Absolutely. And then like you start like you a good like my mama's I was born with my mama's my grandma. Good women make good men. Facts. Absolutely. So it's like mm-hmm. you need that core base. I need that. I was wild wild west around this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Losing and loose cannon just just jumping off the stage with the falcon punch. Yeah. 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 That was this slow that down, focused it up, and get on the money. On. Now we we had Cardi up here, and she you know she talked about how much she supports you and was you know riding for you, loving your music. But now let me ask you a question: Are we gonna get a Cardi second Cardi album anytime soon, man? She, she said, announced it. I thought I she, saw her, I thought that's all I'm announcing recently. No, she ain't announced nah, nothing. She said maybe first quarter. She, she said 2024. Yeah, she said 2024. Is it done? We almost there. We almost there. For sure, I ain't capping. She almost there. Yeah, almost there. Okay. I swear, I thought I saw them put out an album cover and everything. I, I made that up. Yeah, you made that. Yeah, you made that. That, made that, that up. must have been fake online. That's some shit you want. You want to happen, real nigga? <laughs> <laughs> no. And I saw it. I was like, well, damn, why ain't nobody talking about this? It must have been. It probably was fake. That's but y'all, there's all, there's rumors that y'all was working on the joint album together too, though. Yeah, after hers. You think that would be that would be the album? Like the way you just expressed the love for your wife. Yep. And you know why you decided to be with her? You think we'll get that in music on that project? For sure. Okay. For then sure. a tour. Then a tour. Oh, you Ooh, y'all geez. definitely having another baby after the tour. <laughs> That's definitely happening. You de- <laughs> then she said she said she wanted more, right? She said you she wanted more. Yeah, up here. I seen her say that shit up here, man. You don't want no more. Father six. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> Y'all gonna get me beat up by a bunch of College expensive. <laughs> what? I know. Father of Six. Next album. How many you got? Six. I'm done. Done, done. I got four, but I'm done. I'm, I'm done, 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 done. I got two in college right now. College expensive. College waxing that ass. That's man. right. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to a joint. Oh, I, I do want to ask one question. What, what have that? you learned from Takeoff's passing? Um, what have I learned? Mm-hmm. What have I learned from that? Um, yeah. Right? <laughs> what have I learned? I mean, if you um, still if you haven't learned it yet, that's fine too, though. You know what I mean? It's, it's a I'm process. I'm still learning, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why it was hard to answer that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning. Um, I don't even know what to say. The lesson is just pain. Like it ain't really. If you trying to run from that shit, mm-hmm. have you done anything to deal with that grief? Have you like? Like sat down with somebody. Or like, like I be feeling like, bro, that shit. Like sitting down with people. Like maybe I ain't found the right person, but I don't feel like sometimes people like can't relate mm-hmm. to shit. Like your death in the family is different. Like could have been from like sickness or something. My death is different. Where like you want to do something. You want to. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like I done lost a couple friends like this, so I don't feel like. Somebody can sit in front of me that ain't lost a couple friends, like in this way. You see what I'm saying? And in a public way, and like, oh, like, I just feel talk to my mama and God and my wife. Mm-hmm. That's like, why I coach family, you. the family, the family is what is what keeps you grounded. Keep you grounded and be able to hold you tight and you feel comfortable and be being vulnerable. Like I cry with my mama. I, you know what I mean? I cry with my wife, but I can't like. It ain't for everybody to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why culturally competent therapists and psychiatrists and grief counselors are very important. You gotta some yes. you gotta have somebody who from it to understand it. I feel like sometimes in them job spaces they're not giving people who have maybe have a record of mm-hmm. and those are the people you need to have in the office because they gon they've been through some shit that they can really relate to black people. I like mm-hmm. I feel like the therapy thing don't really be for black folks a lot of times cause it's not every person I ever seen in it, like they ain't they like took a right way. Everything was good on paper. Everything is good. The college, da 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 da. It ain't like, um, like a wallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who lived a it. nigga that's in the street? A young nigga's in the street who's selling dope right now with their gun, and and, and and will listen to him way before they'll listen to mm-hmm. somebody that look like them, but just can't. Trying to tell them how to do it. Can't relate. See, I ask questions back. I sit down with somebody. I'm gonna ask you a question back. Like, mm-hmm. so have you ever da 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 da? And if it ain't, it's a waste of time. And I just feel like even with that situation, it's so popular. We a group. I don't know who the fuck I can sit there and talk to that won't be on some like. I said when offset today. It'd be on some. I'm scared of, like like that. And I feel like therapy don't be for like the public. That's why it's therapy. Like that's mm-hmm. why people go to the class. It's not for everybody to be on it. Like that's everybody right. knowing the business. Well, we appreciate you. The album comes out this Friday. Set it off. You wanna you wanna play it? Right? I got song. What was the favorite? What was your favorite song? What, what, what did you feel like? Um, there's a couple. I like uh, I like "Say My Grace." I like "Worth It" because I just I, I'm from that era, so I, I I like you kind of catching you, the bus to flow, which was different. I like for me. "Blame It On Set." I like the one where you had. The, I like "Blame uh, It On Set." Plat, the Project Pat flow. Mm-hmm. Um, the first song on the album, "Hard." On the river, right fall, yeah. That's when he said I'm on the one. Yeah, that's, that's hard. hard. Um. What up? I don't know. I got to listen to it again. I only got to listen to it one time. Yeah, listen to it one time. I too. wanted to bring rap, like rapping on the song, but I feel like it's a lot of auto tune and a lot of like. Mm-hmm. I got melodies on it, of course, but like. Your voice don't need it, though. Niggas got to get to the rapping. Bro. But your voice so distinct. You don't need the auto tune in that. Oh, the joint with Travis? Uh, that's say what I said. Say My Grace. Say My Grace. Oh, okay. Yeah, say My Grace. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, that's hard. That's mm-hmm. hard. We got the video. We shot that shit in Thailand, too. Y'all can't wait till y'all see that shit. Mm-hmm. Hard. What does success look like to you for Set It Off? Like, what do you want this album to do? Because I know you're trying to carve out, you already got your own identity as Offset, but I mm-hmm. think you're trying to carve it out musically. So what does yeah. What does success look like for Offset? Uh, the music connected to the people. Like, I'm not, you know, how we came in the game, like, the, 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 the like, I hate how everything is clocked now. 
like the number shit, like the first day. Because mm-hmm. then that gives people opinions already immediately that they ain't even chatting to us. So me, I'm just trying to connect musically with these people. And like, like you said, identify offset sound like, mm-hmm. like I did on Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. That was like, oh shit, bro, got that, bro. Could, like, it's it's proven like, and showing my creativity. Like, you see my album cover falling from the sky upside down, but I'm still on top. It's like being able to express the art. It's not numbers for me. That should be cap because I come from. See, my my number one record was number sixty and forty. 20 and 10 then number one so I I know like working a record I feel like people don't be working records no more because it's like or seeing the importance of radio and shit because that's what keeps the keeps the wheel spinning like mm-hmm. people be on some oh I dropped this week okay fuck that I'm, I'm working on a new album I'm working on it you got to work the records bro because then that's when they be seasoned it's like seasoning chicken going right. back to that you got to marinate that motherfucker let it sit let it get right, and then you then when you plate the meal, it's like, oh, I want to eat that again, and they keep going back to it. That's why Father Four wasn't like a lit album, like ah, like a turned up album, because I wanted you to digest who I was, like, and walking in my shoes, dealing with the shit of the traumas I went through, mm-hmm. the wife and the kids, and the, and then that album gave me the identity to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not gonna lie, every person that always taught me about that album was like, we appreciate the album, it made me see you in another another lens that I never looked at you at. Mm-hmm. And so it gave people like an opening to me. So now mm-hmm. this one gonna be like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here now. Now I love this conversation cause everything mm-hmm. you saying, cause I saw you say the other day about how it's not too many rappers doing festivals anymore, yeah. only, but so many people can make money. You gonna have to bring all that back. You gonna have to bring back the A&R helping with projects. You mm-hmm. gonna have to bring back Caring about radio, you know what I mean, to get them spins. Like that's yeah. how you gonna end up on them stages. Facts, cause cause them the festivals and them big places, they checking your numbers. They checking your where your song get on Billboard. Mm-hmm. I learned that at like I think I learned that in twenty sixteen. I forgot who the artist was. They was going after us. And I'm like, I know we hotter than us. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. Like but the streaming numbers were it was like a radio show too. I'm mm-hmm. like, well they on on the billboard, they on. Top 15, y'all like number 40 right now. And then it made me understand the significance point of it. So it's some people that still watch. And I just feel like artists ain't, rappers ain't putting on no show, bro. Nah. We just getting the bag and like people try to pay in the bag like that. It's just, the show ain't, like you gotta put on a show. I can do extra shit so I got an advantage. Mm-hmm. And so I'm gonna do it, just go around like. You gonna dance and everything. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you nigga think it's like not cool, cool. People like to be entertained more than anything. Mm-hmm. That's right. You popping your one more thing. You popping your shit on the album too, because you talk about on the album how the first number one was because of you, because yeah. Bad and Bougie was your record. I don't yeah. know if people realize that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. That was your record. It was just you and Uzi at first, right? Yeah. Just being Uzi on. Um, it's just like not being appreciated in the system. I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like not being appreciated in the system. That's what I'm saying, because I can't say certain shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not being appreciated in the system, man. And it's like, believe in me. All right, all right. All right. Well, what you want to hear off the album? What you want to play? Any song I can. Hmm? Any, Any song, song you want. Any song? Play that worth it, man. Okay. Worth it. Let's right. get in that bag, man. Featuring Don Tolliver. And we appreciate you joining us. The album is out this Friday. Set it off. The brother Offset's here. Let's go. And it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.